Hello everyone. Uh, the story of Harry Nelson Pillsbury is a spectacular one. Uh, he learned to play chess when he was already 16 years old. And uh, by the time he was 18, and this was in 1890, uh, he could already uh, defeat uh, the world champion Wilhelm Steinitz. He defeated him in a match of three games. Uh, the result was 2-1 uh, to one in Pillsbury's favor. And uh, okay, even though uh, Steinitz did give him uh, the odds of a pawn. Uh, but as he was definitely the strongest player in the United States and... Uh, well, uh, the Brooklyn Chess Club uh, paid for his uh, paid for his trip uh, to go to Hastings and uh, to the Great Hastings Tournament of 1895. And uh, a lot of people throughout history say that this was the the greatest tournament ever held in that era. Even uh, Garry Kasparov says so in his uh, famous book Me and My Predecessors. And uh, uh, this was uh, is the tournament where Steinitz played his uh, famous game against uh, against uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Bardeleben, yeah, it was Steinitz against Bardeleben, the the Battle of Hastings, or as I like to call it, the the bravest rook in chess history. And uh, there were a lot of strong players here. You, you had uh, Steinitz there, uh, world champion Emmanuel Lasker. You had uh, Chigorin. You had uh, Tarash, uh, Janowski, Schlechter, and uh, plenty of strong players. There were actually twenty two uh, players in the entire tournament, and uh, Harry Nelson Pillsbury actually won the tournament. Uh, he, he was, uh, I think, uh, half a point ahead of uh, ahead of uh, Chigorin and uh, a full point ahead of Emmanuel Lasker. So uh, definitely quite a guy, and uh, he also had this amazing memory. He could like, if you showed him like uh, twenty or thirty words, uh, really weird words, he could remember them all and repeat them uh, forward and backwards. And uh, I will put uh, those uh, some of the words in the description below. And uh, I can't even read most of those words. And he could like look at them and repeat them with no problem. Even even the other day he could repeat them. So yeah, I, I mean I'm uh, I, I always remember when I read about Pillsbury and some chess chess books that I have. Uh, what an extraordinary person he was, and uh, it was only due to his illness and, uh, well, poor health that he never got to, to challenge uh, the world champion for the championship title. Uh, but uh, uh, he did uh, he did kind of, uh, he didn't invent D4, of course, but he was the first person uh, who used it in, in a tournament of this strength and uh, won the tournament. So it was only after his uh, victory using uh, one D4 that D4 was actually considered to be uh, a serious move to be played. Uh, to be played in a, in a strong tournament. Uh, but uh, this game I have prepared for you is uh, Harry Nelson uh, Pillsbury against Emmanuel Lasker. And uh, this so isn't from the Hastings tournament. This game was played in 1904. So this was two years before uh, Pillsbury died. Uh, so let's see this game. Uh, Pillsbury, of course, played d4. We have d5 by Lasker. c4. We have e6. Knight to c3. Knight to f6. Uh, this is some sort of a, uh, it's the queen's gambit declined, we have knight to f3, c5, uh, we have uh, bishop to g5, the semi uh c captures on d4, queen captures on d4, and knight to c6, attacking the queen. Uh, we have bishop captures on f6, uh, now attacking black's queen, and uh, here Lasker played the g captures on f6. And uh, it's, okay, you can't really uh, capture the queen here and go for this rook on a1, because if knight captures on d4, uh, then simply bishop captures on d8, and after knight to c2 check, king to d2, you do grab the rook, knight captures on a1, but simply bishop to h4, and, uh, well, white will uh, grab this knight very soon, and he will he will have two knights for a rook, which is uh, pretty awesome. So after bishop captures on f6, uh, Lasker replied g captures on f6. And we have queen to h4, uh, getting the queen out of, the, out of, out of harm's way. We have d captures on c4 and rook to d1, now attacking uh, Lasker's queen. Uh, bishop to d7, and now we have e3, and uh, knight to e5. We have knight captures on e5, uh, f captures on e5, and now uh, queen captures on c4. As, uh, of course, Pillsbury didn't want to exchange queens. And here Lasker gets an idea. Uh, he will develop his queen with a tempo, queen to b6, and uh, attack this b2 pawn. And uh, this will give him time to develop as a white defends this pawn, and uh, he'll be okay. Uh, but Pillsbury gets uh, gets a better idea. He plays bishop to e2, and he he says, uh, "Okay, grab my b2 pawn if you think uh, this will be important for the game." Uh, Lasker, of course, grabs it. Uh, queen captures on b2. Uh, Pillsbury castles, and we have rook to c8, attacking the queen and queen to d3. And uh, already this is move 15, and uh, Pillsbury is uh, threatening queen captures on d7 with checkmate. 
So Lasker defends this, he plays rook to c7, and we have knight to e4, again with a horrible threat of a knight to f6 check winning a piece here, at least. Uh, so defending it, bishop to e7, <clears throat> and we have knight to d6 check, and the king to f8. If uh, Lasker were to capture this knight with bishop captures on d6, then queen captures on d6, and this is uh, threatening to capture the rook. Uh, the rook cannot move as this bishop will be hanging, and uh, the queen has to help with the defense of the rook. So queen to b6, and now simply queen captures on e5. And uh, this is with a tempo on the rook, and, uh, well, uh, the material is equal, so Lasker didn't really achieve anything with this queen captures on b2. So after knight to d6 check, uh, Lasker decided, okay, king to f8. Uh, we have knight to c4, now attacking the queen on b2, and uh, Lasker plays queen to b5, getting out of the way and uh, also defending this hard-earned earned pawn. And uh, Pillsbury isn't interested in uh, regaining this material advantage, uh, he plays f4. And, uh, well, the threat is uh, to, to open up the f-file uh, for so an additional piece can attack the king, uh, Lasker plays e captures on f4, and we have queen to d4, now centralizing the queen, also with a tempo on the rook on h8. Uh, we have f6, and now queen captures on f4. And we have queen to c5. And uh, here, uh, Pillsbury uh, <laughs> uh, starts an amazing attack. He plays knight to e5. And of course, this knight cannot be captured, as it, uh, well, the, uh, <laughs> the pawn is pinned. So we have uh, bishop to e8. Uh, we have knight to g4 now. And uh, here, Lasker plays f5. And uh, Lasker cannot allow uh, uh, Pillsbury to capture this f6 pawn. If he, if he were to play something like rook to g8, then uh, simply knight captures on f6. Uh, we have bishop captures on f6 and queen captures on f6 with check. And after rook to f7, uh, queen captures on e6, and this is much better for white. So after knight to g4, Lasker, like I said, decided to go for f5. And here we have queen to h6 check, king to f7, and now a beautiful move by Pillsbury. He plays uh, bishop to c4. Uh, with a double attack here on the e6 uh, pawn, and of course uh, the, this bishop is immortal. If uh, Lasker would capture it, and simply knight to e5 check, forking the king and queen. So after bishop to c4, uh, Lasker played rook to, f uh, rook to c6, now defending that e6 pawn. And, uh, well, he, he can defend against everything, so Pillsbury simply played uh, rook captures on f5 with check. Uh, now again with an attack on the king and the queen, and uh, well, the rook has to be captured. We have uh, queen captures rook, and now rook to f1. So Pillsbury gives up two rooks uh, for the queen, but as you'll see, this is uh, quite winning. So we have queen captures on f1, king captures on f1, and uh, bishop to d7. Uh, Lasker is making room for his king uh, to safely get away. Uh, but Pillsbury does not allow this, he plays queen to h5 check, and after king to g8, he plays knight to e, knight to e5. And uh, this is attacking the rook and also the bishop on d7, but uh, none of those matter as uh, white has a forced checkmate in six moves. So any move black plays, it's uh, either mate in six or less. So the best defense would be king to g7. And uh, now the king is in the mating net, queen f7 check, king h6, knight to g4 check, king g5, uh, queen to g7 check, uh, king h4, uh, knight to f6, uh, threatening queen to g4 check, so bishop captures, queen captures with check, and after king h5, uh, bishop to e2 checkmate. Uh, but it never got to this, uh, because after this uh, very, <laughs> very nice uh, knight to e5 move, Lasker resigned the game. So yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's a definitely a beautiful game and uh, a beautiful example of how how the early masters use d4 to to crush their opponents and in this champion uh, how to crush world champions. So yeah, uh, that's it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, for those of you who only uh, hear about Harry Nelson Pillsbury for the first time, uh, I uh, I am very pleased <laughs> to introduce him to you. And uh, yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Vince Oshinaberry, uh, Keith Cunningham, and uh, Mikhail Basilaya for contributions to my channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, since the month of August is behind us, uh, I would also like to thank uh, everyone who contributed to my channel in the month of August. Uh, you've made this entire YouTube experience uh, extremely, extremely easy for me. And uh, it, I mean, it, it's. Uh, it's uh, sometimes it's hard work, but uh, it, it definitely helps. Uh, 
you know, when any of you contributed, uh, you always uh, wrote me a nice message, and uh, it was uh, it, it was beautiful. Uh, I'll I'll put it like that. So yeah, uh, thank you everyone, and uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Um, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.